reincarnation. What does reincarnation mean to you? Do you think there is such a thing? How many lifetimes are you aware I have lived before? One, two, a dozen, a hundred, a thousand? Sometimes you'll hear somebody say, you're a very ancient soul. What are they talking about? Hi, I am Reverend Allie Bierman, and you're joining us right now for the Let's Get Metaphysical show. And let's jump right in and continue our discussion. When you read through the metaphysical literature, you will discover that who you really are is a spirit, a divine spirit that was never born, that never dies, but lives perpetually and forever and is a party to all the lifetimes that you have. Let me explain this in terms that will become a little more clear for you. I know the name of my spirit, of my soul, that's been here for eons, forever, just as yours is. And each time I have a lifetime, and I know I have different lifetimes, because I'm very aware, I see pieces of them. I know languages, I know artwork, I know interpretations that there's no way I could possibly know unless I lived through those experiences in other lifetimes. Let's say that each lifetime is the vehicle that gets me from the beginning of that lifetime to the end of that lifetime. What I recall very clearly is a lifetime in medieval France. So when I came across literature in middle French, nobody had to teach me how to read it. I just read it. I just understood it. Similar experience with studying the Bible, the ancient Hebrew Bible commentary and all of the commentary was written in a language called Rashti. Well, nobody taught that to me. I could just read it and I could just understand it. I have a great love for all things Chinese, for the artwork, for the food, for the architecture, for the whole culture and everything that's a part of it. In fact, one of my Chinese friends at one time said to me, you're more Chinese than I am because I love all those aspects. I know I saw parts of my lifetime in the biblical times. I know I saw part of my lifetime in the Chinese situation, and I definitely saw part of the lifetime in the middle French. So I'm getting from point A to point B in each of those lifetimes. I'm picking up talents. I'm picking up knowledge that there just wasn't another way for me to know, to discover, for it to be clear without anybody explaining or teaching it to me. Same thing happens to you. Stop and think about your life right now. What kind of knowings do you have? And nobody taught it to you. And you never read a book to learn it. You never took a course to learn it. But you know it. So all the skills from each of those lifetimes, all the knowings from each of those lifetimes are a part of who you are, of what you know. So it's not that you're having separate lifetimes that don't connect, because they all connect by becoming part of who you are through eternity, your spirit, your soul, whatever term feels like a fit for you. Now, you heard me mention the word knowings. 
So there are beliefs, and I know I've spoken with you before about beliefs, because you can't possibly manifest something unless you believe it's possible. But here's the thing about beliefs. Beliefs change. They change over time when new evidence comes up. Scientists are very fond of talking about the scientific method, but look back across time, across recorded history. It was once thought the earth was the center of the universe, not the sun. Quantum physics wasn't something that anyone believed existed. The studies that you see done now and today, you see one particle of light going through one single hole, only it's having two different appearances on the surface on which it was projected. Things change over time as we learn new facts, as we learn new realities. They change because of beliefs. Where do beliefs come from? Where do they get stored? Up here in your mind, pointing to your head. People, many people think the mind is in the brain. Well, the thing about your mind is it only exists when you have a thought. Do you have thoughts when you're sleeping? Not unless you're dreaming. Therefore, when you're sleeping, you have no mind. So going back to scientific method, there are companies that do all their own testing. So they say, okay, this is true. And these are the results of our studies. Only they're doing the studies themselves. So a company came out. I'm not going to share the name because I don't want anybody to accuse me of anything. But it had the name university in it. And people said, look at the studies done at ABC University. And what was going on at ABC University was the studies were done and then cherry picked the results they wanted to get, all the others ignored. Now, when I was a teenager, 50, 50 years ago, and I've been in science all my life, at that time, when somebody presented a study and it was clear they had handpicked which results they were sharing and ignoring the ones that did not fit their hypothesis, the whole project was thrown out. That doesn't happen anymore. Today, people go through this ABC University and nobody knows that it's just the companies making the products whether it's medicines or whether it's food or whether it's so-called nutrition. Here's the other piece of studies done at some university. In these times, universities, like most other places, are hurting for income. So when they have lots of empty laboratories in their buildings, they will rent them out to scientists, and I'm putting that in quotes because I don't consider them scientists. They go in, they do their studies in the university where they're paying for space. They're renting a room there, and then they're telling you these studies done at University A, these studies done at University XYZ and their blah, blah, blah results. Again, they're not real studies done in real university settings, not done with legitimate scientific method. 
So who are you going to believe? What are you going to believe? And as I said, a belief changes as new evidence comes up. Beliefs change over time. So what you heard me say earlier today was knowings. I have knowings from the different life experiences that I actually saw that I actually lived. The knowing is what's in my heart. It's not something I think about. It's not something I believe. And it's definitely not something that changes over time. Look through your life and notice one knowing that you have. Nobody can talk you out of it. And you're not thinking about it and deciding about it up in your mind. It's something you know forever and always. And it's in your heart. And it's part of the current lifetime. But then it gets consumed by your soul, your spirit. So you have all this reliable never changes information, knowings going on, all ending up to who you get to be in the world. I am Reverend Allie Bierman, and I thank you so much for joining us here today for the Metaphysical Show. Go ahead and download our short piece how to take your first steps on your spiritual path. So it will help you to have a different understanding from a different aspect, from a different perspective of what spirituality means. Spirituality is definitely something individual. It's your interpretation that you are knowing in your heart and you can get some guidance from how to take your first steps on your spiritual path that link in all links will be in the show notes join our facebook group in the facebook group you'll get to see the extras i put out besides just this i like to make shorts or short videos or little extra pieces to share. You can ask questions when you're in the Facebook group. And please tell me in there or send me a message through Facebook or through the link that is in the show notes, how to contact me. If you're interested in joining my club, A-L-I-T-L-C club, and by joining the club, you're going to get extra information. Part of the AITLC club is joining me for occasional webinars and definitely for a live interactive video call, but it's only for members. I'm glad I'm inside. <laughs> How about you? You can listen to or watch any episode of our show. We're in our fourth season now, so there are lots there to choose from on the show website. That link also is in the show notes. And remember, Audible has a very special gift for you. When you follow my link, you get to download a free audiobook, and you also have 30 days to look around. There's so much phenomenal stuff. I just downloaded a slew of books. I, I do that every month because I have a membership that lets me go in the Plus catalog, look through, and any book I see in there that's cool that I want to know about because I like to know about science and I like to know about philosophy, and I like to know about art, and I also like to know about sports. 
I enjoy a whole gamut of things. I'm just plain interested in learning and growing. How about you? What interests you? You'll probably find it in Audible. Remember to enjoy, that's capital I-N, capital J-O-Y, exclamation point, every moment. Because absolutely nothing in your life, no experience that you think is happening outside of you, you don't get to be aware of it until the sensations come inside within you. And I do look forward to being here with you next time.